In the previous videos, we discussed how to create curves and then how to use them in a move. In this video, we'll discuss a couple of advanced curve features, so let's jump right in. In the previous videos, we showed a triggered time curve. So how does that work? We enable our drive, we home our drive, we remove the home bit and we're ready to run. If you recall, we had the trigger bit configured on X4 pin 6 and when we make the trigger bit true, we move out and when we make the trigger bit false, we move back. But let's say that you don't want to do that. Let's say you want to do a product reject or possibly an insertion and you want to move that when the trigger bit goes true, the motor goes out and comes back automatically and you don't want to have to worry about when the trigger bit goes false. So we can do that. We'll make the switch on bit false to disable the drive. I'll go to the curves folder and here we have our curves in our drive, curve one and curve two. To get them from the drive, I'll click and then hit shift and click again, bring them up to the edit window. And if you recall, curve one was the move out and curve two was the move back. So we can simply combine these curves and create one curve that's an out and back. So how do we do that? We hold the shift key and click on curve one. So we've got both of these curves selected. Now we go to the join curves icon. We give it a unique curve number, which would be three. We'll call this curve S curve out back, just to give it a name. It already tells us how long the curve is because it's a combination of two curves. It's telling us how many points the curve is going to be made up of and the default is fine. And now we'll finish and we'll see that curve three, if we double click, is out and back. So then we will take that curve, click on it, drag it down to the download window and to get it into the drive, we'll have to click on Download into Drive. When that happens, we get the warning that we'll have to stop our firmware. So yes, we will do that. And now we're downloading our curves into the drive. Okay, so we no longer want to run Curve 1 and Curve 2. Now we just want to run Curve 3. So we'll go into the Motion Interface folder, Run Mode Settings, Triggered Curve Settings, and here we set the Rise Curve, which is the curve that runs when the trigger bit goes true. We set that to Curve 1, but we don't want to do that anymore. We want to execute Curve 3, which is the Out and Back move. So we'll click the checkbox to have that take effect. Now on the fall curve, or when the trigger bit goes false, we don't want it to do anything. So we're going to click on that, and we're going to put zero in there. Click our green checkbox. And now we've taken care of the trigger bit going false. So I'm going to go back to my control panel. I'm going to reboot my drive. Yes. And to get started, as always, I'm going to enable override on my switch on bit, make that true to enable the drive. I'm going to enable manual override on my home bit and make that true to home the drive. And now to actually execute that curve, we'll go to pin six of the X4 connector, which is the trigger bit, enable that. And when we make that true, we should get our out and back move. And we do. And notice that it doesn't really matter when we make the trigger bit false, just when we make it true. So true, and when we make it false, nothing happens. So with this technique, you can 
combine any number of curve segments to make a long and complex curve if you want to. So that shows how to create more complex curves, but we have even more flexibility. What we can do if we want to run that curve in a different way is we can actually modify that curve without changing the curve itself. And to do that, I can go to the Time Curve Settings folder. Now this gives me the ability to change offset if I want to, to change amplitude scale or time scale. So as an example, let's look at the amplitude scale. So if I want to, I can reduce or increase actually, but in this case I will reduce the amplitude of the curve pretty obviously to 10%. I'll check my checkbox, go back to my control panel, and now when I execute this move, you'll notice that it's much shorter. So it's a very short move because I've reduced the amplitude to 10%. Likewise, we can change the time scale. So if I go to time curve settings, I see my amplitude scale is at 10%, so I'm going to change that back to 100%. And my time scale, instead of 100%, I'm going to make that 200% to make the move go quicker. And notice how these parameters have these little red L's next to them. That indicates that these are live parameters and that they can be changed either by this screen or by a PLC or whatever without having to stop and start the firmware. So now I've made my time scale 200%. If I go back to my control panel and I execute the move, you'll notice that it should go much quicker. And if I take it back to 100%, back to my control panel, then it's back to normal. So those are some advanced concepts in using curves. I hope you find this video helpful. My name is Jeff Burt, and we'll see you next time.